Good morning, my soccer universe. Ah, yes, there were a few games and that I watched. It was quite interesting. Um, I won. Uh, it's of course time to wear the Santoria shirt. We'll talk about Santoria in a sec, but I want to first talk about Spain. Um, and I'm going to do it now in blocks. We'll go Spain, Italy, Germany, and then a little bit FA Cup at the end. Um, but the first game I watched, or I could watch most of it, although my uh, daughter wanted to build her birthday presents, although her birthday is today. Uh, we had another celebration, but for my friends, she got quite some presents and we had to build, 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 build. So yeah, that kept me occupied during most of the first half of the Atletico game. Uh, Atletico Getafe. Uh, I didn't miss much, honestly, in this first half. Uh, what I could tell is that Atletico is super efficient. There was really not much happening. First shot and goal, Griezmann scores, 1-0. Uh, and a few minutes later, just let me pull it up that I don't make too many mistakes in who scored and who didn't. Um, and then just a few minutes later, 10 minutes, so it's on 27th and the third, 37th. A nice move in, second shot of gold is saved by the goalkeeper. Rebound by Niguez goes in 2-0. Three shots on goal, two goals, and you know, the two were basically in one sequence. Absolutely uh, amazing, efficient, um, you know, Atletico. Atletico, that's the way they play. And I think that that's a way that you actually, yeah, got to give it to them. Uh, they really got to have something going there. And if they can keep it up, they will be a very damn dangerous team in all competitions where they're still in. Although I think La Liga, probably the train is slowly sailing away for that one. Uh, there were a few more chances uh, for Atletico. I think Getafe did not show them much. I think they were more or less... Um, demoralized uh, by that and you could see they were complaining uh, here, 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 there and like, Atletico could, could have made the uh, scoreline even more comfortable than 2-0. Uh, I'm not sure if it would have been all that deserved but I think it was well in there and in, and in, in, in the end there was even uh, one player sent off uh, with a yellow red. I actually didn't see that anymore because then I switched to the Sampdoria game and then a straight red. Um, so two players sent off and it got a little bit touchy at the end so yeah. Atletico being Atletico. Um, and while we're at it, a few other games there was, uh, the early game was Sevilla Levante. Um, that was actually sort of an open game. Yes, advantage Sevilla in the first half, but nothing happening. But uh, as soon as Ben Yeda made it 1 0, even then it was not a done deal. Um, because um, Levante, who has not been showing much in terms of offensive um, movement, um, they got their. Uh, big chance and hit the goalpost but then that was all that um, then it was all Sevilla uh, Andres Silva, Vasquez, Sarabia from a penalty, Promise from a penalty um, and then uh, a penalty was saved but you know, on, the, uh, on the rebound in 5-0 for Sevilla for us Austrians Maxi Weber came from Ajax made his debut actually had a chance as well so yeah he was in uh, defense. He's of course a defender. Other games, Leganes Eibar was 2-2 with Eibar having already a 2-0 halftime lead and Valencia 3-0 uh, against Villa Real. Um, that was actually an interesting game, but I didn't watch it because there was another big game that I'm way more interested in. Uh, but Valencia is getting something going. So the Diakabi, Cherishev and Moreno were the scorers there. I haven't seen the highlights. Of this one. So the table at the moment, Atletico closes the gap momentarily with two points, um, but you know, there's not much. Sevilla is now um, level on points with Real Madrid again. Again, Real Madrid is playing today, 36 points. Um, Getafe, 31. So yeah, Valencia moves up momentarily uh, in seventh spot uh, with 29 points, but again, only momentarily because they can well fall back to. Uh, Let's see, we're around ninth spot uh, if Betis and Real Sociedad uh, get points. Anything else? Leganes is uh, 23, uh, 23 points is in 15th uh, place. Villarreal is in trouble. 20, uh, at uh, 19th with 18 points. That honestly doesn't look very, very good. Uh, 
Levante has only 26 points as well. So yeah, uh, they're uh, in 11th. So that was Spain. Uh, let's talk Italy because I, I switched them to Italy and I watched one and a half Serie A games. Um, Sampdoria Udine is a game that I honestly um, looks interesting to me, but of course uh, Sampdoria is pushing for the Europa League, Udine is playing against uh, relegation. So, uh, and that was basically the um, whole theme of the game. I gotta say that game was relatively open, um, not too many chances, but you know, Sampdoria is a is a team similar to Fiora Fiorentina that, that you gotta watch because it's uh, they really have a great offensive with Saponara and Gagliarella. There's really uh, two players that are worth watching, absolutely worth watching. And in the movement forward, Santoria is a joy to watch. Um, it was, as I said, it was rel re relatively open, uh, but then two refereeing decisions kind of put the game towards. Uh, Sam Doria. Um, the first one was a penalty where Behrami is standing in the box looking towards the opposite goal and the Frel runs by him. I'm not even sure he made contact, but he's falling. Um, I'm not saying he faked that one because he surely wanted to get the ball and kind of um, fell in the process because Behrami was standing there but you could see Behrami wanted to shoot the ball away but he is um, stopping himself uh, from making hunt counting and the frail suddenly is falling down. Honestly when I saw the replay I was sh sure that um, VAR will intervene and this, the penalty will not not be given but it was given. Um, kind of weird honestly and then yeah Gagliarella very um, dry <laughs> into the corner it's now I think it's his 11th game in a row where he's scoring and I think he has now the record from Gabriel Batistuto he equalized him there was something said like that uh, during the broadcast uh, a second penalty was given early in the second half uh, again <sighs> One that doesn't need, need need to be given. I mean, there's the header, the ball goes on the hand and he cannot do anything. I mean, it's going right here. Um, touches, the penalty is given, Cagliarella, uh, even more. Roof of the net makes it 2-0. And as if you're for Udine, you got to feel horrible about that because those were two penalties that I think another pen, uh, re referee does not give. Uh, interestingly enough, later on, uh, there was a penalty, a clearer penalty that was not given. So um, the referee did not have his best day. Um, Linetti made it 3-0. Uh, that was actually a nice attacking move. And then Gabi Gabbiadini 4-0. Uh, and yeah, at 2-0, the game was done and dusted. I, I, I would even see at 1-0 because it, for me, it was not really a penalty, honestly. I... Did, I don't under, I didn't quite un, I understand it because there was really no contact. You can see how the player does not want to make the contact and le wants to have the frail run through. Yes, he's not moving out, and maybe that was the reason why it was given. But um, it was weird. Still, I'm wearing my Sampdoria shirt. It's too pretty to not be worn. Uh, and as I said, Sampdoria is worth watching, and Cagliarella. Hey, he's he's an amazing player. Uh, it always uh, is a little bit of pity that he didn't do more uh, in his active time. Big game in Italy in the evening was, of course, Milan Napoli. Uh, before the Sassuolo beat Cagliari 3 0. Milan Napoli ended goalless, but it was a pretty good game, I have to say. Um, very open, uh, not necessarily in terms of scoring chances, although both teams tried. I think it was 15 16 in shots. Let me just check that uh, statistic. Uh, 14-14 and 5 on goal, 6 um, away from goal. But, you know, all these shots, except for maybe one or two, the goalkeepers needed to save. But it was still... Um, Napoli, you could see, is a good team that um, is playing well for. But uh, I was surprised how well Milan looked most of the time. It was always going in phases, like 10 minutes for Napoli, 10 minutes for Milan, 10 minutes for Napoli, something like that. Um, but Milan, very uh, stoutly... Uh, when defending four lines very closely together, making it difficult for Napoli. But going forward, they actually looked okay. I was, I was just the last punch missing. 
if from from my uh, perspective, if they had a little bit more genius player, Cagliarella, I think they could. Not sure saying that Cagliarella Cal Cal would, would would be not a fit for Milan, but you know, some of them will be a little bit more fa fantasy or in form. You would look a lot, a lot better. I'm looking at you, Cagliarella. You played very very active, but always you know you could see that the last punch, the last pass was always missing. Uh, similar goes for Suso. I uh, always felt that there could be something, uh, you know, just a split second often too late. That um, that was one thing I didn't necessarily like. Um, Paqueta going forward was a revelation to me. Uh, really doing well for the first half, second half he disappeared and was been substituted. Um, but yeah, defensively still some problems. But what I'm mostly happy about is, and I almost saw this coming in in a way, Bakayoko was horrible at the beginning of the season, but now he's trying to assert himself. I think he played better, in my opinion, than um, Kessie. But if that defensive midfield, if they can go make a good partnership, I think Milan has something going. Just let's wait and see. The game ended nil-nil. Uh, Kessie uh, had a huge chance that was just... Uh, Shot that would have surely gone kind of goal if, if the Napoli player wouldn't have touched it and went an over goal. Uh, but in the last hand, that time to miss nah, Napoli also uh, at that moment, Milan looked on the ropes a little bit. But it was a good game that I thoroughly it was thoroughly absorbing for me. Uh, yes, I have a stake in that game, but I really like both teams. I mean, Milan is my team, so I will always support Milan, but I really like Na Napoli as well. And it was it's just great to see Angelotti. Uh, back in Italy and seeing the love that he receives from the Milan fans. So yeah, uh, the result is probably not good for any of those. I mean, Napoli secures a little bit more the second, uh, second spot, but this was anyways more or less set, set, set in stone. Milan moves now temporarily two points ahead of Roma. But yeah, if Roma wins at uh, Atalanta, and that's my only uh, thing, I think Atalanta-Roma is one of those games where, yeah, it's not a foregone conclusion. Um, so it might be that this point is enough and then Milan uh, plays Roma uh, next weekend and they, uh, Milan and, Ro and Napoli play uh, during the week in the Coppa Italia absolutely crazy yeah, but yeah, it will be Milan now two points ahead of Roma Sampdoria moves up now in sixth Lazio has to play Juventus so this actually may put uh, Sampdoria really, really, really through Atalanta is a game that I'm looking at because uh, if Atalanta wins today against um, Roma, they're ahead of Roma. So uh, that's actually a big match matchup. Unfortunately, we have a birthday party. I'm not sure if I will see much of that. But Atalanta against Roma is a huge game. Uh, bigger than the Lazio Juve in the evening. Um, yeah. Let's talk Germany. Uh, I saw three highlights. I mean, the games to watch. Borussia Dortmund Hannover. Uh, 5-1 looks very comfortable, was most of the time, but you know, for a long time Hanover, despite being in there, looked that they're in the game. Yes, it was 1-0 uh, by Hakimi, nicely played, but uh, they should have gotten a penalty as well, where again, I don't know why VAR didn't go through. This was a really, really clear penalty. Um... Reus, Götze, Guerrero, Witzel made the goals, uh, Bacalors. Uh, just made it 4-1 for Hanover. Dortmund rolling. I think once it was 2-0, uh, there was only one winner. And they scored three goals in seven minutes from the 60th to the 67th. So, yeah. Dortmund um, gets gets the result. Uh, Gladbach against Augsburg also gets kind of a lucky result. I mean, they were dominant. Augsburg had a few chances. But uh, the um, goal by Wendt should not have been given because there was a clear offside. So the goalie was... Ahead, the defender of Augsburg was the last one, and he was actually kind of um, the two players that were offside did not touch the ball, but they interfered with the vision and everything. So I think it should not have been given. And Hermann with a wonderful second goal. But if you want to see nice goals, watch Werder Bremen against Frankfurt. Um, both Eckstein and Harnik for Werder scored wonderful goals. Eckstein. Uh, Going through three defenders in a really uh, only a striker can can, can 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 do that, but you know, uh, twisting and then um, 
not making uh, a, a player, make it one nil and Harnik moves forwards, puts the goal goalkeeper, he puts the ball like here and then runs around the goalkeeper to round it. Uh, reminds me of Pele, uh, 1970 World Cup. Rebic um, got the first equalizer and Haller from a penalty, the second one. And so uh, the, the table in Germany, Dortmund 48, Gladbach temporarily ahead of uh, Bayern, but level on points. Bayern is playing today against Stuttgart. Unfortunately, I think that we know the result. The foregone conclusion, uh, Leipzig is also playing today at Düsseldorf. That, that, that could be a little bit iffy. Um, what else? So Frankfurt is now in fourth. Maybe they will go back to fifth. Hoffenheim actually got a win, 4-2 uh, uh, against Freiburg. And yeah, Augsburg, Düsseldorf, Hannover is 11 points. Yeah, I think if I look at it, it's Augsburg, Stuttgart, Hannover, and Nuremberg. Those are the four that make the two relegation uh, that that want to avoid that are fighting for re re relegation. Germany only two go down, and then there's a relegation playoff. So that might save Stuttgart, I would say. Werder is now temporarily overtaken by Mainz, I see. Uh, minus 10, where the 11, but yeah, Germany pretty much um, everything went a bit like form. Um, and then the last thing, let's just look at the FA Cup results. Um, there's not much. Um, Akron Stanley, Dar Derby County 0 1, Swansea 4 1 against G Gigglingham, Shrewsbury Town, uh, Wolves 2 2, <laughs> Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury. I, know, I, I heard there was a discussion about that. Let me know what you think. Uh, that will go into replay. Same as for Brighton and Hove Albion against West Bromwich Albion. Battle of the Albions. Uh, ended goalless. Doncaster Oldham 2-1. Newcastle losing at home to Watford 2-0. Middlesbrough Newport County 1-1. Manchester City Burnley 5-0. That was to be expected. Portsmouth Queen's Park Rangers 1-1. Millwall Everton 3-2. That's a surprising result. And uh, also Wimbledon West Ham also 4-2. Also surprising. And yeah, we have a few more games today. As I said, FA Cup. Um, that was a big game there, but other than that, uh, what can I say? Well, let me know which games you watched. I thought uh, La Liga and uh, Serie A were very interesting. Also Bundesliga. Uh, didn't, I cannot see Bundesliga live, but I probably wouldn't have watched over Dortmund. I might have chosen over Atletico. But yeah, uh, there were great goals in, in, in there. Um, I think it's really worth watching uh, if you see any highlights of other Bremen against Eintracht Frankfurt. Okay. Uh, tell me which games you watched, which ones you like, whether you agree with my assessment. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this, and I will talk to you soon. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.